from self-driving technologies to internet connected devices for many companies. It's all about the Consumer Electronics Show in Vegas this week. There, Bloomberg Business Week senior writer Brad Stone caught up with the founder of One Wheel to talk about the tech behind its half hoverboard, part skateboard product. We really consider one wheel to be a new board sport. So it's definitely similar to skateboarding in some ways, but it has more in common really with snowboarding, wakeboarding, and surfing. So it's really a new kind of digitally enabled board sport. So a year and a half ago, you were a principal designer at IDEO. A great job, yeah. a coveted job. <laughs> Why did you leave to start one wheel? So IDEO is really my dream job. I mean, you're working with amazing people and, and building really cool stuff for great clients. Um, but I had this idea, you know, and like any inventor, I was working on it in my, uh, you know, in my garage, in my basement, and uh, got the first prototype working, and it was pretty cool, I showed some friends, and, uh, you know, then put it on the back burner for a little while, brought it back, and it just kept, you know, recurring, recurring, and I was like, I think we need to bring this thing into the world, because it really makes people smile, you know? We are here on the Las Vegas Strip, and I see this, this thing is getting attention. People are walking <laughs> by and looking at it, looking at us riding it. How does it work? What is happening inside the One Wheel? Yeah, so inside One Wheel, there's a powerful brushless hub motor and that's in the middle of the wheel. That's something not everybody gets when they first see it. They're, they're asking, how does it move? It moves because there's a motor in the middle. And then the next question is, well, it must be really hard. Well, it's not really that hard because it's got sensors, gyro and accelerometer sensors, um, and algorithms that help it balance forward and back. So really, the rider just leans forward to go. They lean back to slow down. They lean on their heels and toes to, uh, to make turns. So this is an important week for you guys. Uh, yeah. Your backers are now getting the one wheel. Exactly. Uh, so tell us wh where you are now, how much it costs, and what 2015 looks like for you. Yeah, so it's been a really amazing year for us. I mean, we built a team, we raised a seed round of investment, and we dove into manufacturing. We're building the product in San Jose, California, really close to our R&D center, uh, which is a really cool decision for us because instead of having to fly overseas, to work on it, we can we can work on it locally in California. So now, you know, our manufacturing is fully online. A lot of our Kickstarter backers have already gotten their boards. There's a few that we're still getting out, and then we have a long list of pre-orders that we're working for, uh, working through. And then after that, we're uh, selling from stock and starting to get into retail later in 2015. And so, last question: How do you make it both easier to use for for the newbies like myself, uh, but also something that uh, you know the hardcore skateboarders or boarders are going to love to ride? So, w what we launched today is something called digital shaping, and that's enabled by an iPhone app uh, that just went into the App Store this morning. And so, from the app, you can actually change the way the one wheel rides. So, you can start out on classic, which is a little bit dialed back, slower acceleration, gives you more help with the balancing. And then once you really get the hang of it, you can slide it all the way up to extreme. Extreme gives you maximum top speed, maximum acceleration, and really gives the kind of carving feeling that board sports people really love. All right, thank you, Kyle. I'd love to try it out. Awesome, let's go. Yep, there you go. So okay. now we... like fun. Wasn't the fastest there, but that looked like fun. Bloomberg Business Week. Uh, senior writer Brad Stowe in Vegas. Uh, Brad, okay, so that's one of the many gadgets. How much did that cost, by the way? Yeah, yeah, $1,500. Uh, that does Ooh. not include the medical bills, which are probably inevitable, uh, and, and that's the first model, so that'll come down. It's an interesting gadget. It represents the weird here at CES, and there's a lot of weird here this year. Okay, so what caught your eye then? What's weirdest? Well, I mean, the first thing, uh, CES is always about the TVs, right? The consumer electronics companies desperately want you to replace that, that flat panel TV you bought 10 years ago. A couple of years ago, it was all about 3D TVs. Nobody bought those. Uh, this year, it's about uh, super ultra high definition. Samsung just announced nine different models, uh, probably about $1,000. Curves is a big theme this year. So the new TVs are slightly curved. LG Electronics announced a new curved phone, uh, which, which sort of hugs your face. So that's an interesting new trend. We'll see if that catches on. And then, as I said, the strange. You know, we're seeing lots of drones, uh, wearable devices that track all kinds of health. Yesterday, we saw uh, an app-connected toothbrush, which actually grades how well you brush your teeth. I, I don't think I would do very well uh, uh, in that regard. Uh, well, my kids need that, though. Okay, so uh, uh, there's also some news, as we talked about, you know, Dish announcing their Sling TV. There's a lot of 
a buzz around over the top internet television. So, uh, you know, this must be sort of a, a moment where this is a cord cutter's dream at CES. Uh, we'll see. Um, uh, right, Sling announced, or, or Dish, uh, the, the satellite TV maker, announced this new over-the-top service. Uh, $20, CNN, the Food Network, and then, and then crucially, ESPN um, online, so you don't need a cable or satellite subscription. Uh, but, you know, $20 is a lot, and these things add up, and suddenly you're paying the same amount as your cable, cable bill. But clearly, that's another theme at CES. Another one is the automated car. And, uh, you know, you have your Mercedes uh, talking about a, a car with four seats that swivel and don't even face the road. And Ford CEO Mark uh, Fields will be uh, giving a keynote later today. Uh, he believes that in five years, luxury cars will have completely automated features. So uh, that, that's something to watch, and we'll be talking to Mark later today. All right. Well, watch that for sure. Brad, thank you so much. Brad Stone of Bloomberg Business Week Live in Las Vegas at the CES show.